Hey, what's going on today, guys? I'm Anthony, back with another video. This time, I've got the Vocaster 1 by Focusrite. Um, this, the Vocaster 1, if you're not familiar with this, this comes from Focusrite. Focusrite is known for their Scarlet audio interfaces, line of audio interfaces. But this is the Vocaster 1. It's just the singular model with one XLR port versus the Vocaster 2, which has two and some other features. A lot of gain-hungry microphones need a FET head or a cloud lifter. This one does not need that. This is plug and play. It has 48 volt phantom power for condenser microphones, and it has 70 dB of gain. It has um, enhancements, audio enhancements. It gives you um, auto leveling. So if you hit that button, you just talk for 10 seconds, and then it sets your levels, um, which is really, really cool. It doesn't work great from what I've heard, but I, I will test it out and, and, and let you guys know. And there are four enhancement presets. So what that means is you get a radio, a warm, a clean, and a bright preset, which is really cool. There's also a mute button. There's a, a software hub that you can download to, to play around with those presets. I believe this also came out in May of 2022. So I saw a deal. It was about 150 on Amazon. So I was like, oh, let me let me buy this, review it, check it out. Cause this would be cool to, you know, maybe leave on my desk or bring it with me um, on trips, throw it in a backpack, et cetera. And it's great for a sing single purpose. You know, if you're getting into audiobooks or just voiceover work, it it's perfect. So here we go. Let's jump in, open the box, and check out what we've got in here. All right, here we go. We've got the Vocaster 1 interface right here. We'll take this out, put it off to the side. Here's some, uh, you know, instructions, uh, manual, some safety information. No big deal. I don't need any of that stuff. Some of you might want to just check it out. Here's the USB-C cable. And that is it, it looks like, because you don't need a power cable. The USB-C just plugs into your computer or your iPad or your device, and that gets its power just like such, which is nice as well for portability. Uh, look how tiny this thing is. I mean, I'm shocked. It's a little bit bigger than my the palm of my hand. I mean, it's really not that big. Let's rip this bad boy open and show you what we're working with. Okay, here it is. Here's the back of it. Let's pull this tab out. Let's pull this tab off. Just quick. I really like the look of this thing. And it's not that heavy. It's pretty light. It's all speckled, you could see. It, this thing is made from recycled material, which is kind of cool, environmentally friendly, sure. So here it is. Um, here's the back. Here are all your buttons and, and plugs and such. You have a dedicated power button, which is really cool on off switch. So you could plug it into your device and you don't have to have it on all the time, but to have that dedicated power switch is nice. So you don't have to constantly unplug it from your computer. We've actually got a, here's the phone output. Again, that would be TRRS. Again, this one does not have Bluetooth. So if you want to connect your phone, you've got to connect it using the phone cable those are your outputs for your speakers there's a dedicated camera input so if you have like a dslr you can plug that straight into your camera and you're just ready to go which is awesome i've never seen that on an interface before the rodecaster pro doesn't even have that which is really neat very interesting i don't have a camera so i won't be able to test that out per se and then of course you've got your XLR input for your microphone. And again, that needs to be a TRRS cable for the phone port. And here's the front. 
You've got your headphone uh, volume adjustment right there, dial. And the headphone port is right here in the front. This is going to require a quarter inch adapter if you have just regular headphones or if you don't have quarter inch headphones. So you'll need a quarter inch adapter, which is fine because I have a few of those. So I'll have to use that. And then here we have our gain knob for our microphone. And then here in the front is our three buttons. Again, feels very light. It doesn't feel cheap though. And look at that. It's the size of my hands put together. It's really not that big. So I'm super excited to get this thing plugged in, hooked up to my computer. I have to download the software and I'll play with that. And um, I'll let you guys know what I think. I'll come back as soon as I get this thing plugged in and ready to go. And we'll be off and running with the rest of this review. So I will catch you guys back here in just a second. What's up, guys? We're back. I finally got the Vocaster working with my MacBook Pro. So this is a quick PSA that I wanted to give you guys um, a little a little bit of a lesson on my part. So I used to, or I still do, I have a Focusrite Scarlett Solo third generation. Apparently, because I had the Focusrite control software on my computer, it was interfering with the uh, Vocaster hub software. So after emailing back and forth with Focusrite for a better part of a couple of days, I got that squared away. I now have everything working. So what you're listening to right now is my microphone, and I'm going to list everything in the description. This is my microphone. This is my Rode Procaster XLR cable straight in to the Vocaster hub. I don't have any preamps, cloud lifters, or anything. Normally when you hear my videos, when I do reviews of products, I'm using this microphone into a cloud lifter or a Fethead type device and then running into the Rodecaster Pro. This is just straight into the Vocaster. It has plenty of gain, I think 70 dB of gain, which is plenty for this gain-hungry dynamic microphone. The other thing is, um, with this, you're listening to it on one of their four presets. There are four presets. The one that I think sounds the best is the clean uh, enhancement. They're, they're enhancements. So basically, I'm on the clean enhancement right now, and I'm going to give you a rundown of what each of those sounds like. So here's what this sounds like if I turn off the presets and there's no enhancement whatsoever. So now I have turned off the enhancement. This is zero processing. So they have, obviously, it's built-in processing that they adjust and I'll show you what each uh, uh, what the what the software side of it looks like, and when you change it, the different enhancements, what that looks like. You can only change those audio enhancements through the hub. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this back on because I think it sounds a lot better with the audio enhancement on. This is clean. This is the second preset. I think this sounds the best. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through all four of them and you can maybe decide which you like the best. So let's switch back over to the first preset. Now this is the radio preset. So now you're listening to the radio preset and this adjusts a couple of things just ever so slightly compared to the clean enhancement. And again, I'm going to show you on screen what those look like. And you'll you'll get an understanding of of all the different tweaks that are being done and, and so on and so forth. So this is the radio enhancement. Let's switch it one more time. Okay, now we are on the warm enhancement. It's very difficult for me as I'm speaking live right now for me to hear the subtle differences. So it would take me having to go back and listen to hear which ones sound the best. And that's why I landed on the clean. And I made no other tweaks to this. You know, when you when you select it, it it you know, it adjusts certain things like compression and things like that and limiters. And I think that the clean sounds the best. So this is the warm and then there's one final one I'll switch to right now. This is the bright. So this one is actually not bad either. They all sound pretty good. 
Um, but the, what these do is when you change them to the different presets, the four of them, it, it it changes a little bit of the compression. There's some treble, there's some bass in there. So it tweaks them ever so slightly. So if you're not one of these like audio engineer types that don't want to take the time to learn or figure out how to in a garage band or a logic pro or adobe audition something like that where you don't know what you're doing with limiters compressions noise gates blah, 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 blah. you can just quickly set this thing up choose it in the software and it does the hard work for you and you can still get a good quality sound so I, again i picked this bad boy up the vocaster one um, the Vocaster 2 comes with two XLR imports, uh, inputs if you're doing, say, a dual, uh, a podcast with two people or a podcast with a guest. Um, and then the, the Vocaster 2 also has Bluetooth, which this one does not. But this one also gives you the ability to plug, say, an iPhone into the vocaster itself and then you can play different jingles or or audio clips or even videos from youtube things like that and it will play through the other thing was when i just went to plug it into my computer first time i've used it in a while i was getting a red signal um on the computer icon that's supposed to be white so it tells the computer it's connected i started panicking restarted my computer no all it was was the cable that it came with the USB C in the back of the vocaster one itself for whatever reason it was not um it was not plugged in i guess all the way so once i took it out reseated it plugged it back in it showed up on my computer because i was panicking that i just ran a software update uh, a Mac OS update yesterday, I think it was. And I was like, oh boy, here we go. Is this thing not compatible with this now? But no, it, it's working fine. I'm going to actually switch this back to the clean vocal because I think that sounds the best. Overall, guys, I like this thing. It's perfectly, it's super small, compact. I could throw it in a book bag, take it with me on a trip. If I need to do a, you know, po so, uh, a podcast on vacation, whatever I'm doing. And I also think, I've dabbled in audiobooks. I think this is a really neat device for something like that. Because again, the Rodecaster Pro is overkill. And, you know, that has all its own built in compression, noise gate, limiter, et cetera, in that as well. Um, and obviously, it's a $600 device compared to just this. And then you need a cloud lifter or fed head. And it, it's so bulky that it's hard to take it with you. But if you're just doing audio uh, work, like voiceover work, like reading an audio book, for example, you can set this up. You can dabble with some of the, you know, with the four presets, find one that works for you. And you're off and running. You, you just need that, a computer and a microphone, a an XLR microphone, of course. So I get, guys, this thing is a no-brainer for $150. I really like it. If you want a true sound comparison, check out my you know my other videos where I do use the Rodecaster Pro connected to this microphone, and you'll get an idea if the sound quality is that much different. But for most people, if you're listening in the car or if you don't have headphones in, you're not going to really notice the difference. And um, it's really not enough to justify $600 versus something like this. But if I want to just throw this on my desk, it takes up a whole lot less space and I just plug and play off and running. Highly recommend this product. If you're interested, you know, let me know in the comments section. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Anthony signing off, guys. I will catch you in the next video.